Daniel Ricciardo is set to drive his dream NASCAR this weekend, while Red Bull hit New York and Dallas. You can now watch full 24-minute episodes of The Inside Line at our official home on unbeaten.com. Daniel Ricciardo is set for a bumper American adventure this weekend, with the McLaren driver getting a taste of his dream NASCAR in Austin. Ricardo was promised a drive in his NASCAR Idols car, the late great Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s 1984 Wrangler Chevrolet Monte Carlo, by team boss Zach Brown, who owns the car. If he scored a podium for McLaren, which he did with his breakout win at Monza, Ricardo is eighth in the standings, his 95 points, 50 behind McLaren teammate Lando Norris. Red Bull Racing kick-started its American assault in style last week with a stunning run through New York ahead of the United States Grand Prix. Its 2011 title-winning RB7 beating the drum for the sport. F1 continues to make inroads into building U.S. interest with Red Bull's latest show run first taking in the Hudson River and Wall Street. The squad's famous demonstrations are now an institution with Red Bull able to fly in, set up, and run its F1 cars almost anywhere. Red Bull's US tour continued on to Dallas, Texas's third largest city, where a temporary track was created through the Harwood Commercial District. The crowd was kept entertained by Aaron Colton, one of the world's best freestyle motorcycle riders before Sergio Perez donned his helmet for a run in the RB7 to deliver the freshest donuts, marking his first demo spins for the Red Bull brand. My first time doing donuts in a Red Bull car uh, was really enjoyable. I could see a lot of smiles on the, on the, on the crowd, and, and yeah, uh, that, that made me feel very happy, and uh, I think it was uh, a day that uh, we will not forget anytime soon, so very happy for that. Formula One has finally revealed its provisional 23-round 2022 New Era calendar, with the biggest surprise being the absence of China. The sport is planning to kick into top gear as the world recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic with a record number of races, though it attempted that number this year before Australia cancelled. The season will again blast off in Bahrain on March 20. China's absence means Imla is round four, April 24, followed by F1's new event in Miami. Singapore has returned to the calendar subject to contract. It's another compacted schedule, however, with 23 rounds run within just 35 weeks. But the sport has avoided three triple headers with just two in place, both after the summer break. Melbourne will again be a great place for a race, with the sport confirming its return to Albert Park for the Australian Grand Prix on April 10 next year. F1 last raced in Australia back in 2019, with the two events that followed it cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic and quarantine restrictions. But with Melbourne, which holds the record for most days in lockdown, set to open up from this week, the excitement for events is again there. The timing's right. If Melbourne wants to re-establish itself on the international sporting calendar and the calendar at large, then you've got to be delivering these events. The promoters now have just over five months to organise the event, with the round three slot providing some breathing room. Crowds are expected to return, with plans for 50 to 100,000 per day, and at this stage, for the teams to continue to operate in COVID-safe bubbles. They'll come in with special arrangements into dedicated airport terminals, into uh, you know designated hotels that uh, suit Formula One, and uh, they'll have a probably just a, an operating bubble between hotels and the circuit. But it's a long way off, and that's something that will work very open-mindedly with with Formula One and the Victorian government. Mercedes technical boss James Allison says the squad's recent upgrade at Silverstone has made the season a much happier place and that the team is definitely in the hunt for an eighth straight title double. The Silver Arrows have won the last two races in Turkey and Russia, 
with Sir Lewis Hamilton finishing on the podium in five of the last seven. But a recent lift in straight line speed has given the squad an edge. If we can work well with our car over the races to come, we have something that does look competitive enough to be in that fight. There's more than a, more than just speed that will determine the outcome of these races, though, as, as the as the last several have shown us. Williams has set its sights on an ambitious green future, with the historic squad committing last week to be climate positive by 2030. The former powerhouse continues to modernize at a rapid pace, with its latest initiative bringing Williams' emissions reduction target in line with the below 2 degrees Celsius target of the Paris Climate Agreement and UN Climate Change Global Agenda. We have a great plan put in place to be climate positive in 2030. It's based on data, it's based on actions, and we are very confident that we can achieve it. Williams' sustainability strategy is ambitious, but it's not a trailblazer in F1, with Mercedes having a net zero carbon footprint since 2020, while the Sport and McLaren have pledged to be net zero by 2030. Williams is, however, the first Formula One team to sign up to the United Nations Sports for Climate Action Framework. It's wonderful to receive this commitment from Williams Racing and really excited to see what they will do next to implement the ambitious vision that they have set by setting targets and embedding them into all aspects of operation. Aston Martin Lagonda's executive chairman, Lawrence Stroll, has said that his green squad is F1's next big thing. Stroll has big ambitions for the Silverstone outfit, with the goal to fight for titles within the next five years, and said in a chat with F1's official podcast, Beyond the Grid, the belief is there. I think it's fair to say everyone recognizes in the paddock that we're the next big thing to happen in Formula One. There definitely is that vibe. Stroll broke ground last month on a new 200 million US dollar facility at Silverstone, which will take the squad to new heights. But the Canadian says Aston Martin's definition of success in F1 is realistic. It doesn't have to win a world title, it has to be fighting and contending for world championships. Um, winning would be the icing on the cake, but it has to have the ability every weekend to be able to win. Traditional MotoGP track, Qatar's Losail International Circuit, will have a dramatically updated pit entry to prepare for F1's inaugural visit. Losail, which was brought in to fill a gap on this year's calendar before its 10-year deal starting from 2023, has long been associated with bikes and needed updates to align with safety for F1. The pit entry will now be at a far gentler angle with a bigger braking zone, while curbs and barriers are being upgraded for F1. The sports power brokers are set to revisit this year's Belgian Grand Prix, with the F1 Commission agreeing the rules surrounding the sodden race need to change with no racing laps completed. Spa this year saw just two laps run under the safety car, ensuring results could be classified with half points awarded. But while the willingness was there to race, time just ran out, said safety car driver Bernd Mylander in a chat with Australian Grand Prix podcast In the Fast Lane. On Sunday, there was no time after the Porsche race. There was not even one time gap to say the track was safe because it was even raining more and constantly in, in the same way. F1 will now look at its sporting regulations to see what can be done, with drivers and fans complaining the sport waited far too long before running off two slow laps in haste. But Mylander said it was all done with logic. The weather forecast have seen a gap. The team said, okay, we want to wait. Um, race control said we want to wait for a little bit more time, but in the end, there was uh, safety-wise, there was no, no, no time window to, to start.
Thanks for watching. To stay up to speed on all things Formula One, make sure you hit the subscribe button.